All right, big deep breath. Grab those knees. And let's do it. And push. Perfect. Two, three. Oh, you're almost there. It's dark as night. That's it. That's yeah, it. Keep going. Hard. Take it's a big deep breath. Deep breath. He's here. All right, take and your breather. Push. Take a breather. Stop your pushing. Breather. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's actually not right for us. 950. Oh my god. Oh hello. His head, he keeps doing it with like this. Like he just he looks kind of mashed. He just he likes it like that. So I had a baby. And I want to tell you guys a little bit about the birth story. I originally planned on kind of doing what I did with Ezra's where I vlogged little clips. You're not allowed to actually video film um, the delivery itself, but I planned on doing that. However, the way that everything went down, I forgot my camera entirely. I was a little too stressed and rushed. So we're gonna kind of talk through this a little bit more and I'll just jump right in. Um, I had another little baby who keeps putting his head like this in the wrap, by the way. He kind of looks a little like mushed. He keeps doing that. Um, so this is Roman Ward Robinson. He was born July 29th at 9.50 p.m. after like four and a half hours of labor. <laughs> um, and the story is insane. He weighed seven pounds, eight ounces, and he was 20 and a half inches long. And he was born 37 weeks and six days. So literally from the moment we have found out about Roman, he has been just a surprise after a surprise after a surprise. And then look at the dark brown hair. Like, come on kids, stop surprising us. So it, it's just wild how it all happened. So I am gonna dictate a little bit more about what led up to this day and I'll start out with delivery can happen freaking fast. So with Ezra, I did not have any contractions until I was 38 weeks pregnant to the day. And I delivered him at 39 after 12 hours of labor. Um, everything was kind of, we were aware of the time a little bit more. Um, for the most part, my mom, after we got to the hospital, it was about an hour and a half, two hours until she got there, um, like at a normal waking time with Ezra. And she kind of kept track of timing and stuff like that. But I would say that 12 hours for a first delivery is pretty quick. Some people may not think it is, but that to me was pretty fast. And Ezra had the cord wrapped around his neck twice and he was born sunny side up. So this entire delivery, from the moment I found out that Ezra, uh, we were pregnant with Roman actually, I had said like, I think it's gonna go fast. I told you guys that like my number one fear was that I wasn't gonna get my epidural. So earlier in the week, I was 37 weeks to the day and I started getting contractions and I was really like taken back cause I was like, I didn't get these till I was 38 weeks and we were almost so chill this time that I was like, okay, I guess I need to pack my bags. Like there were things that we had wanted to do and our plan was to do them the weekend that I hit 38 weeks pregnant. So we didn't have a car seat installed at the time of like me going into labor. Um, my bags were like 95% packed, but I still had a couple things like skincare, you know, just random things that I hadn't packed. And um, throughout the week, I was having these real contractions. They were not Braxton Hicks, they were legit contractions, like very painful. Um, there was one night I didn't sleep well because I had the contractions. So I show up to my OB appointment on Thursday, and this was the 27th. Uh, I was only two centimeters dilated, but she made a comment, and it was actually the same doctor that delivered Ezra. She made a comment that the doctor the previous week had made as well. And she was like, your cervix is super soft. So your delivery is going to be very fast. And she was like, that's a great thing. Like your delivery is going to be fast. And I was like, oh, okay. That's kind of like, it was reassuring to hear, but at the same time, kind of like a little stressful. But I was two centimeters dilated and I was kind of frustrated just because I was like, okay, I'm having all of these real painful contractions. Like, why is this happening? Why is it happening? And I'm not dilated any more than two. And I think that was kind of my thing is I was like, I'm just going to have to continue to do this. I'm going to have to dilate for so many more weeks and it's just going to be really frustrating. So, um, I actually had made a comment to my mom earlier in the week. I was like, I think I'm going to have this baby soon. And I think it's going to be fast. And after that Thursday appointment, like, I don't know why I felt like that, but after that Thursday appointment, I was like, I still feel like he's coming soon, but maybe not this suit, I don't know. I just had a weird feeling headed into the weekend. So um, two centimeters dilated, again, contractions on Thursday night, contractions on Friday night, but nothing crazy. Saturday morning, 3.15 a.m., I am, I like literally my eyes shut open and I was like, 
holy cow, that is a painful contraction. And it lasted for about 30, 45 seconds. So I fell back asleep. And then a few minutes later, I was like shot open my eyes. Again, painful contraction. And this happened a couple times and I was able to fall back asleep. But then when the contraction would happen, it was like, no ma'am, you are not sleeping. These are, these are painful. So I started timing them. They're about 15 to 20 minutes apart. This went on for two hours until roughly five. I decided to get up, go shower. I was like, your hair's dirty. Do your nails, you know, do something that can distract you. But part of me was like, maybe this is it. Maybe this isn't it. I don't know. 15 to 20 minutes apart is not active labor. Uh, but I took a shower. It did not help my back pain at all. It did not help the contractions like ease off at all. Um, pain wise, like I could, it was just so, so painful. So I let Sam sleep. I was like, I think, you know, this could be it. So got up, did my nails, um, let my hair air dry, went out on the back porch, continued to just track these contractions to see if they got any closer, still 15 to 20 minutes apart. Finally, Sam and Ezra wake up and I told him, I was like, listen, I'm having contractions. I don't know if this is it, but I'm, I'm like really, I'm struggling today. Like this is, these are really painful. And funny enough, he like panicked. He had done this with Ezra whenever I got really bad contractions, he like panicked and he started like hanging shelves in the house. Um, so something in me was like, why don't you just have breakfast with Ezra today? Like we usually do Sunday morning breakfast as a family. It was like, why don't you just have breakfast with Ezra? We'll do Saturday breakfast instead of Sunday. So we're making breakfast contractions still going and i had like seen something one time that said like pineapple can help induce labor not induce labor but like pineapple can help something and i was like all right let's give it a shot like these are definitely real 15 minutes apart still we're sitting at like at this point it's been probably four hours i've been having these contractions um so i ate some pineapple we actually ezra was the big reason because we've been trying to give him more fruit so like kiwi and pineapple and he i opened the fridge and he like reached in trying to grab the pineapple so i was like let's eat pineapple contractions come to a screeching halt and i was like are you freaking kidding? four hours of this i have been up since three in the morning no contractions now nothing not the first twinge not the first cramp nothing i was so mad because i was like i really thought this was it so we clean up breakfast and it's finally like you know 10 11 o'clock ezra goes down for his first nap so i said sam i'm going down for a nap too i'm tired we have a birthday party later we have date night later because it was our last date night before a baby and i was like let's let me just take a nap i've been up since three i'm exhausted i don't have any contractions so i'm gonna sleep fine let me take a nap so i take a nap two hours roughly because i woke up two contractions and I was like good freaking lord are you contractions again and I did get a two hour nap so I felt really good but immediately I noticed they were coming faster and I was like okay is this it so I start timing them and we're sitting at about eight minutes apart which is significantly closer and we actually had a birthday party to go to for our very good friends their daughter turned one on August 3rd and they had texted us months ago and said we're actually having her birthday the weekend before. Hopefully Mariah hasn't delivered. You know, we would love for you guys to come if she's, if she's up to it. Um, like I would not miss this little girl's first birthday for nothing. And so I was like, you know, we're going to this birthday party. So I start getting ready. Contractions, eight minutes apart. I mean, I'm talking eight, 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 just like so continuously, no doubt about it. They are eight minutes apart, roughly like 30 to 45 seconds. Biggest difference was I had been, this might be TMI, constipated. Oh. Yeah, oh. I had been constipated all week long. And all of a sudden I was like sprinting to the bathroom every 10 minutes. And when I told my mom that, I was like, mom, I'm having contractions like eight minutes apart and I cannot stay off the toilet. Like that's so TMI, but I was like, I cannot stay off the toilet. And I was like, and I was constipated earlier this week. And I don't know if it was just the fact that she's had babies or the fact that she was a labor and delivery nurse, but she was like, oh, this baby's coming today. She was like, I'm actually gonna go ahead and get ready. We have dinner plans as well later, but you're having this child today. Like my mom even told me, she was like, it's a great day to have a baby. You will be having this baby today. It is, it is happening. And I was just like, but my contractions are eight minutes apart. She was like, nope, it's happening. You're having the baby. So still contracting, end up going to the birthday party and I was dead silent the whole time. Like we got to the party and I was like greeting everyone. Hey, 
day and then I would like kind of just like walk off into the distance and like stand there and stare at a tree for a second and I tried to be as discreet as possible because I was not about to mess up this little girl's first birthday party and I did not say a word to anybody I was just like I am this is labor it is happening I'm having contractions every eight minutes like I do not want to say anything but I want to see this sweet little girl I want to you know celebrate her birthday and finally I had to tell one of our friends our our like whole friend group was there and finally I looked at one of the girls and I was like I think I'm in labor so if I just like stop talking all of a sudden that's why eight minutes apart this is nothing like we are still we are we are not hospital bound yet and like 30 seconds after I say that six minutes apart contractions for 35 to 30 to 45 seconds six minutes 30 to 45 second contractions six minutes 30 to, and I was like okay wait hold on <laughs> we might need to leave so I ended up using it's called the contractions app or the contractions timer and the one thing I will say is that was like it was telling me it's like you need to go to the hospital go to the hospital go to the hospital six minutes apart go to the hospital and I told Sam I was like I was told by two doctors two separate weeks apart that my cervix is soft that labor is going to go fast we got to go so finally i told the parents of the little girls like listen guys we got to go i'm so sorry i think i'm in labor they were of course so excited and so precious but um that was when i think things got a little bit like stressed out like stressful for me so we come home immediately or no, we dropped Ezra off at my parents first. Again, we were going on a date night this night. So my parents already had planned to keep Ezra, which was great. So we dropped him off, came back home, and we were like rushing. We didn't have a car seat installed. Um, thank God Sam knows how to do that quickly. I did not have the rest of my bags packed. I mean, I was just sitting here like six minutes, six minutes, six minutes having these horrible contractions. And so I'm just rushing because I'm like, at any point in time, these are going to start being minutes, just like a couple minutes apart. And I'm going to have this baby on the side of the road. So I end up, we throw our bags in the car. He gets the car seat installed um, and we just take off to the hospital. So we pull in, tell triage, we do the whole thing, go in and immediately they're like, we have to check you, you know, we're gonna hook you up to the monitor. And I could tell that they did not have a sense of urgency after they saw the monitor for a couple minutes. And so she checks me and she was like, she's at a two. I don't really know, you know, anything. We're gonna have to wait. So they monitored me for one hour and that's what she told me. She said, it's 345 right now. You're at a two centimeters dilated. Like, you know, we're not sure this is it. So we're gonna wait an hour. And we'll check you again for any change. And that's what she told me. She was like, we're gonna check you for any change, not just dilation, anything. And we'll let you know. I was like, all right. But I could just tell they didn't think it was it. Again, I sent my mom a picture of the like paper and she was even like, I don't know if this is it. So sure enough, they space out to about eight minutes apart as soon as I got there. And I was so frustrated. I wanted to cry. I was like embarrassed. I was like, I'm literally one of those people who's sitting here like wasting their time taking up a bed and sure enough, oh my God, so many people gave birth that weekend because our pediatrician's office was slammed full of newborns. Like they told us they had like nine newborns to see that day. Like they were busting at the seams and I was like, I'm just taking up a bed. I'm literally having now my contractions have moved back eight minutes apart. I'm not like, this is so embarrassing. I'm so frustrated. And I told him, I was like, this is just going to make me like more hesitant to come in next time but they did their job. So many people on Instagram are like, they should have kept you longer. No, they should not. They did their job. They absolutely did it correct. So at the one hour mark, nurse checked me again, exact same nurse too. She checked me again and she was like, there's been no change, honey. Like this is, I'm sorry. This is not, you know, you're not in labor. And I was so frustrated and I was just like, oh my God, like I am in so much pain. My contractions are still eight minutes apart at least, like six to eight, and they're so painful. And the midwife came in and she was like, listen, you're still a little bit too comfortable looking in your face for this to be labor. She was like, this isn't to say that it's not gonna happen soon. She was like, this just isn't it. And she was like, but we're always here. If you think that you're in labor, please come back. She was like, if you think your water broke, come back. So I was just like embarrassed. This conversation is at 5 p.m. on the dot, you guys. 5 p.m., okay? She tells me, come back if you need us. We are always here. They were super nice. They did not judge me. I did not feel judged, but I definitely was judging myself, okay? I get dressed. I put on the dress that I was wearing. I'm like, let's go get some food. From the time it takes to get from the second floor down to the, uh, I delivered at Spartanburg Regional and they have this like lovely little private lot for moms. It's like right off the front door. It's amazing. I started having contractions again. 
like they never really stopped, but like they were like getting closer together. And I was like ignoring them because I was like really irritated at this point because I was just like, I'm not having this baby soon. Like I'm in so much pain and I'm not having this baby. But literally from the time it took me to get from the room on the second floor to the parking lot that's right outside the door, I started having crazy close contractions. I was like, all right, fine, I'll, I'll time them just, just to see. And we went to El Paso Tacos and Tequila. If you know Spartanburg and Spartanburg Regional, those are about five, maybe like six minutes away from each other. I'm telling you, contraction, contraction, contraction. They are two minutes apart. I was so irritated. I was like, I just left labor and delivery. They told me that this was not active labor. My contractions were, I was watching them on the paper, eight-ish minutes apart. I was just told I was too comfortable. Now I'm seeing white, everything is so painful. Why is this happening? So I just thought it was gonna go away. So I told Sam, I was like, let's go eat dinner. Like I wanna go on a date night. This is potentially the last time we're gonna have a date night. Let's go on a date. So thankfully it was 5 p.m. So there was like no one in this restaurant. We get in there and I'm still having contractions like two minutes apart and they are so freaking painful that like literally there's a woman two tables over and she is watching me and I can see that she's like, is this girl actually in labor in the middle of a freaking restaurant? Yes, ma'am, I am. Yes, ma'am, I am in labor and I am eating Mexican food. Do not judge me, I'm starving. Like I had not eaten anything since early that morning because I was in so much pain I didn't want to. So I literally would like sit there and I would like be gritting my teeth, just like trying to be quiet, just like not moving. And then it was like the contraction would end and I would shovel Mexican food into my mouth. And then I'd have another contraction and I'd sit there and I would like grit my teeth and then I would shovel Mexican food into my mouth. So finally, I'm like, all right, I don't think, I don't think we can wait anymore. I think, I think this is it. I think we're gonna have this baby. So I told Sam, I said, you gotta go get the check. I have to walk to the bathroom because movement was making me feel better. Standing up was making me feel better. But I was like, you have to get the check and you have to get it now. Like this is, this is real labor. I was seeing truly white. Like it wasn't like seeing black. It was like, I was seeing the Lord above. <laughs> I was in so much pain. And so, and I was being quiet, but like I could, I couldn't be much longer. So we get in the car, we head back to the hospital. I was still kind of in denial. And I was like, let's walk around for a minute. Like maybe they'll stop. Sam was so annoyed with me. He was like, get in the car and we are going to labor and delivery. I don't care if you're embarrassed. This is actually happening. So we get to labor and delivery at 6.30, you guys. It has been an hour and a half since they literally told me I was not having this baby. And I walked in and it was actually still the same hospital staff, they had not left yet. And I remember I looked at the nurse, it was the same nurse that had checked me. And she like was on her phone and she looked up at me and she just like grinned huge. And I went, these contractions are not like those contractions. And I just burst into tears. And so she was like, all right, let's go. Let's go get you into a room. We're gonna have to check you again. Um, and I was like, hold on, I have to stop. And I stopped in the middle of the hallway and I was just sobbing because I was like, this happened so fast. I think I'm about to have this baby in triage. Like, I didn't know. So we go into triage. Immediately they checked me and it was so funny. The two nurses that were the same two I had before were like smirking at each other and she looks at them and she goes, yeah, she's had a four. <laughs> she's four centimeters dilated. And immediately they like, I can tell the urgency changes. They pick it up and they're like moving. They're taking my blood. They're connecting me to things. They're giving me my IV. They're asking me all my questions. I mean, they are like, they are moving. And so I, of course, I'm just still sobbing. And then I like would be in so much pain. I like could not be quiet. Like I was like groaning. It was just really bad. Um, because by a four with Ezra, like I tried as long as I possibly could to wait for an epidural with Ezra. I asked for it at three. And then they checked me like within a couple mm. minutes of getting my epidural with Ezra. And I was at a four. So like to come into the hospital and be actively at a four, I knew it was gonna be much longer until I got my epidural, so I was like really, I was really stressed. And I was just so upset. I was like, I am not gonna be able to get this epidural. Like my mom's not here. What, baby? I was like, my mom's not here. Like, get my mom here now. I, you know, I'm just so stressed out. So finally this sweet little nurse comes in and she goes, listen, she was like, kind of walking me through everything that was about to happen. She was like, this is your room number. So if you wanna go ahead and tell whoever else is coming, um, you know, so that no matter what, whether you're able to communicate with her or not, you know, she can know what room number to be in. 
and I was just like, I still, I was still sobbing and I looked at her and I was like, I'm just afraid I'm not gonna be able to get my epidural and that's like what I want because I I, I like loved my first delivery with my first son because I wasn't in pain. And she was the first one, she like stopped and she was like, honey, listen, you are at four centimeters dilated. She said, but you're not thinning as fast as you're dilating. She was like, so that's gonna buy us some time. And I was like, but I just want my epidural. And she literally looked me dead in the eyes and she was like, I promise you, we are going to get you your epidural. So I felt a little bit better after that. She did tell me, she was like, we have to wait for your platelets to come back before we can give you epidural. By the time we get to your room, you will have that. Like those should be there, it takes about 20 minutes. She was like, we're gonna get this for you. So I end up going to the room. They had just done shift change. So it's like right at seven o'clock. And the nurse and I didn't really have time for warm fuzzies. Like she was very much so already in like this girl is going to have this baby soon mode. Um, so she was really quiet for a while and just like did not talk a lot. She was just like focus mode, getting everything ready. Um, and finally I start to, I'm still contracting. I start to notice that she's telling everyone as I, as they come in the room, whether it's another nurse, whether it's someone who's like the baby nurse, um, we had the cord blood banking kit. So she tells her, she's like, Hey, she had a baby last year. And I hear her telling everyone this. she's like, Hey, she had a baby last year. She had a baby last year. I hear her. She goes, Oh, your platelets came back. Um, and she read them off to me and I was like, is that good? Like I can get an epidural. And she said, yeah, absolutely. And so she was like, call Ashley. I heard her on the walkie. She was like, call Ashley. Um, and it was like, can't connect. And she was like, call Ashley. And she even said to her over the walkie talkie, she was like, she had a baby last year. So finally I'm like, what's the deal? Why, why is she saying this to everybody? So I asked her, I was like, is there a reason that like, is that important as far as like labor goes? Or is it just like, you're just updating them on history? Like, what is it? And she goes, um, and I could tell she like, didn't want to tell me, but she goes, it's, it's just that like when you've had a baby, like the closer to, together your babies, the faster your delivery goes. And I was like, oh, oh okay, great. So like she didn't even, she had not even checked me, nothing. She just knew I was at a four previously. Um, so she's telling everyone and they're all like, oh, okay. And everyone's sense of urgency is like, quick, quick, quick. Finally, sweet Ashley comes in. I could pick that woman out of a lineup of a million people and gives me my epidural. And, um, she, the actual, the nurse was having some computer problems. So she stayed and was like talking with me for a few minutes, making sure that, you know, I was adjusting okay to it. And it was like, as soon as I got the epidural, I could just breathe. Like I could relax. Um, they checked me again and I was at seven centimeters. You guys, at this point, it's like, I think it was right at 830 by the time I got my epidural. So I had been laboring like for two hours it actually took a lot longer than I realized after I got to the hospital, like from the time I got to the hospital till I got my epidural was two hours. I was seven centimeters dilated and I was just like, oh, okay, I can breathe now. And so finally I was like, okay, we can have, we can have time for the warm fuzzies, <laughs> me and my nurse. And then um, I kind of settled down a little bit. I wasn't as emotional and grunty. And I asked her, I said, can we have the doctor actually come just break my water? Cause I knew that you know, the water, um, when they broke my water with Ezra, that's when my contractions really changed. And um, just like, me, it kind of just made a difference. And so I was like, can we have the doctor come break my water? And she was like, well, your doctor's not here yet. He's on his way, but we can have the midwife come in um, and break your water. And she was the same one I had had earlier. And she like laughed. She was like, I just knew you were coming back. She was like, I can't explain it. I just knew we would be seeing you again. I just didn't know it'd be this, this fast. So she comes in. She checks me, breaks my water, and she even was like, oh, she's like, she's here. She's gonna have this baby within the next like hour. And it was about 8.30, she was right. Um, Dr. Friendly gets there, we're chatting, he's just super nice, and he asks, you know, where was she at last time? And she's like, I haven't checked her again, but she was at a seven, you know, just a few minutes ago. And he goes, okay, I'm gonna go grab a snack, let me know when it's time. So he goes and grabs a snack, and um, finally I asked her, I was like, can I sit up? Like, I just really wanna sit up in bed. And she was like, yeah, absolutely. So she sat me up and um, yeah, she had not checked me yet. So she sat me up and so I was like sitting vertically chatting. My mom had already come in at some point in time. I don't know when. And even my mom was like, this is the most chill labor and delivery ever. Like now that you've had your epidural, like this is, this does not feel like delivering a baby. You're so calm. And she was like, we're all just like laughing. And the doctor came in and was like telling stories. Like she was like, this just doesn't feel like labor. Finally, at about 9.30 ish, I started to feel some pressure. And 
um oh it makes me emotional so i started to feel some pressure so the nurse comes in and i hear her over the thing and she goes hey we're about to start pushing in you know room 207 or whatever and she was like can you can you guys come in in the room you know filled with it was her my baby nurse so roman's nurse the doctor and then there were two women who were dedicated to doing our core blood banking and then my mom and sam and she like came around the bed and she was like do a practice push and i practice pushed, and she literally jumped up and she was like no, no no okay never mind you don't need to do that just wait until the doctor gets stressed like you don't need to practice push you are good and um he went and stood at the foot of the bed and he was like all right just take a deep breath in and breathe out like just push and roman was born and it was like the most incredible thing ever like I loved my delivery with Ezra. I did, I mean, I had to push really hard, but it was really quick. And like, I got horrible hemorrhoids with Ezra, but like this baby, I mean, he literally just like kind of fell out. And I remember just looking down and I saw his little brown hair and I just could not believe that he was mine. Like I, it was the same exact thing I felt with Ezra. Like I just couldn't believe that like that child that I was staring at was my baby. So, they laid him on my chest, they let Sam cut the cord, the whole nine. And it was just like the best thing ever. Like actually he was like about like this and you know, they like kind of rub them and stuff. Like I think it's called stimulation or something after they're born. They were trying to like stimulate him and I literally just like put my arms around him like this and I just laid my head into him. And the nurse gave me like a couple seconds, you know, and she was kind of trying to go around and um, they were all like talking cause I'd showed them all pictures of Ezra with his bright red hair and they were all just laughing about the fact that like I had given birth to a child that looked nothing like him as far as hair coloring goes and it was just like amazing like it was the most incredible experience because while it was scary and I was so scared the whole time that I wasn't gonna be able to get my epidural and I wasn't gonna like enjoy the actual pushing process as I, I had been before once I got the epidural and I just chilled out and my body relaxed it's like I was able to like I dilated so fast um like I got the rest of the way super quick because I was able to just like breathe it, it was just like this incredible thing and like even mom and Sam were just like that just didn't feel like you just had a baby that was just so calm and so like refreshing Sam did did some skin to skin you know they took him and weighed him and they brought him back and I just like I couldn't believe it like I just I could not believe that this little baby that was a complete surprise we had no idea I was even pregnant with him then came so early after being told he wasn't gonna come at all and I wasn't in labor and here I was just holding him and I was just in such awe that like I went from a birthday party to the hospital to dinner to having a baby. Like, it was just crazy. Um, but he passed all of his tests so beautifully. He did so well. I did well. So we were able to actually go home the next night. He was born at 9.50 p.m. And they, like the pediatrician, for some reason, did not want to let us leave. And I was like, I am not staying an extra night with my child having passed all of his tests. Like, I'm not staying an extra night just because. Like, I want to go see his pediatrician the next day. I want to go home while my toddler's sleeping so that I can kind of just go to bed and transition a little easier. Um, and it was amazing. But Ezra did get to meet him in the hospital. He was a little uneasy at first. Like he didn't want to sit next to him at first, but he definitely was interested. Like in what, what is that? That looks like a baby kind of like that looks like a human, but I don't know. Once he realized like, it moved and mommy and daddy are holding it. He kind of did warm up. And then of course, you know, as I'm filming this, it's I'm like nine days postpartum and he's just absolutely loves Roman so much. He just like all the time is bringing things to him and giving him his pacifier out of his mouth. Um, Cause he doesn't understand that like the baby can't take his pacifier. Um, he brings me the sound machine whenever the baby's crying. Like he is so smart. He brought me my water the other day, brought me my boppy pillow the other day when I was nursing. Like he is just the sweetest baby. So Roman has been an absolute dream from the moment that we found out he was in my belly. And since the moment we got him outside, he's been even more perfect. Um, he's an easy baby, just like his brother. He doesn't really cry a lot. He sleeps all the time, sleeps really well at night, nurses well. Um, but we just can't believe how it all worked out. Like, I think that's why I just keep saying like, I can't believe it because although Azra was born 39 weeks, 
there was not as much of a dramatic lead up. <laughs> like it wasn't this, no, you're not in labor. Oh yeah, you're at a four kind of thing, but it was beautiful. It was perfect. I would not change it for the world. And it was really a cool way to like book in the end of my pregnancy. Um, this is solidified for sure, bringing home another baby that we are happy and content. I've told Sam so many times over the past week that this is like, my heart has never been this full. And it's a very strange feeling to look around and know that I am living out the reality that I have, had always like dreamed of. Like my dream had always been to get married, to build a home, to have two kids. I've said that for so long. And here I am with my husband of five years. We just finished building our home two weeks before I gave birth to our second baby. And I was like, I'm just so happy. Like my heart is just so content. My heart is so full. So <sighs> Roman has been just like the best, like most complete part to our family and I hate so badly that my Nana did not get to meet him. I'd like to think that she did, you know, give him a little kiss before he came down um, to meet us. But he was actually born, July was her birth month and he was born the same month that she was. Um, and he carries her maiden name with him. So Ward is her maiden name because, you know, you have like your middle name and then your maiden name and then your new last name or whatever. And, um, we knew we wanted Ward because it, there was, there's a lot of history behind that name, but like Ward just seemed to be the one that I wanted and gravitated towards. Um, I know it would mean a lot to her, so he's just perfect and he makes me so happy and he just is like I, I can't explain it but he's just like the perfect little final puzzle piece to our family so this was a very long video a lot longer than i thought but wow the day was crazy how it all worked out um and we are so happy so that is the birth story of our sweet little roman ward and man we are so so content and so happy so Thank y'all for watching the vlog channel. Um, next time I'm here, I will be getting back to regular vlogs. I just wanted to share like kind of a, a video here on the birth story because I don't want to like flood my main channel with baby stuff. Um, so I hope y'all liked it. Definitely make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this cute little brunette boy um, and my sweet little ginger baby. But we love y'all and we're so thankful for all your love and just sweet messages over the message, over the birth of Roman. We're so, so grateful. So love y'all.